Underneath an acacia tree a mighty lion lay. King of all the jungle, he reclined in regal majesty, and every cheetah, fox, and flea bowed beneath his sway. Finishing his midday feast, he gnawed a joint of wildebeest and flicked the flies away. The lion ruled with tooth and claw, a fearless autocrat. He upheld the jungle lord as other monarchs had before, and as he licked a regal paw, omnipotent he sat among the bones of wildebeest. Recently deceased and purred just like a cat. Every animal fights for equal animal rights. Every crocodile, camel or cow, cockatoo, cockerel, squirrel or sow. Every stoat and skunk considers Darwin bunk. Today all llamas, hawks and sharks and creatures chained in zoos and parks are all well versed in Mao and Marx and so they've set their sights on equal animal rights. Underneath an acacia tree a young baboon drew near. And insolent as he could be, he stepped straight past his majesty and chained himself against the tree without a sign of fear. And then demanded rights for all animals, both great and small, and yelled for all to hear. The masses, so this ape revealed, could rule the world alone. The jungle law could be repealed. The fate of kings and queens was sealed. The proletariat would wield all power on their own. This trumped-up self-appointed cat must show he is a democrat and abdicate the throne. Every animal fights for equal animal rights. Every crocodile, camel or cow, cockatoo, cockerel, squirrel or sow. Every stoat and skunk considers Darwin bunk. Today all llamas, hawks and sharks and creatures chained in zoos and parks are all well versed in Mao and Marx and so they've set their sights on equal animal rights. Underneath an acacia tree, all in the heat of noon, the lion with a stomach ache digested several pounds of steak, and since the pains kept him awake, he mused all afternoon. Rebels are an awful bore, and eating them is such a chore, especially baboon, especially indigestible baboon. You're charming. I'm so dowdy, it's alarming. It's true to say I very rarely stand out in a crowd. Ghosts forget to introduce me. Women don't try to seduce me. But even though I've never noticed, I am very proud. But since I purchased honorary spectacles, the world's at my command. I'm always in demand. Girls follow me all day and do anything I say. I'm no longer ineffectual, I'm considered intellectual, as I peer at that more handsome man through rims of black. Rivals look like simple yokels, seen through my whole rim by focals, but now I have seductive charms that our fellows lack. And suddenly I find that every woman wants to mother me, they want to smother me. I hardly dare to cough, just in case my specs fall off. I was sexually inactive, women found me unattractive, but since I've worn my horrid spectacles, I'm more assured. I was one shy and retiring, I was very uninspiring, but now with my amazing spectacles, my problem's cured. For I have found that wearing spectacles gave me more sex appeal, though the horn's not real. With horny looking specs, I obsess the female sex. People laughed when I first hinted. I would have my glasses tinted. With rosy colored lenses, every girl would look sublime. Though the rims, as far as I know, are not made from horn of rhino, yet wearing glasses, I get passes nearly all the time. Sir Isaac Newton's wig that throbbed a mighty brain. His cerebellum was so big it often caused him pain. And, and when, when an apple round and red fell on his crown, the bruising lead.
to forms exploding in his head like corks from warm champagne. When is a cauliflower? How does a flea? Where is an April shower? Why is a tree? Which is a what's his name? How does glue? Who is a thing me jig? I wish I knew. Through apple orchards he was led, so history books recall. Though apples toppled on his head, he didn't mind at all. He knew the answer must be found. The question still buzzed round and round. What makes an apple hit the ground? Why does the fresh fruit fall? For a genius like me, it should be quite a simple thing, like the answer to the question, how long is a piece of string? And if x squared equals y squared plus the sum of twice the whole, then it's likely that the answer is a rod or perch or pole. But if y squared equals x squared plus the difference, one must search for the square root of the cosine of a rod or pole or perch. And if three men dig a hole in five days using half a spade, one is back with Archimedes and how principles are made. And that is why I've always found the problem such a strain as apples, rods and poles and perches rattle round me brain. Now Newton knew a thing or two, yet what a what it frowned. He took so long to find the clue that brought fame and renown. But now the answer's clear to see, and nobody would disagree. The simple fact of gravity, what goes up must come down. When is a cumulus, how does it be? Why does a calculus, what is the key? How is your father, when does stew? What is a thing be poop, I wish I knew. With his fertile brain took time to work things out. What hope have we to ascertain just what the world's about? What makes the earth go round the sun? What motivates a current bun? How is a granny not undone? We'll always live in doubt. We'll live in doubt. Probably. <laughs>